Yo, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Grip and Rip Sports Cards, back here with another video for you guys today. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the sad truth behind 2024 Topps Series 1 Hobby Boxes. That is right, guys. We're going to be talking about all hobby box formats today and the sad truth behind them and you will understand what I mean in just one minute. But before we get into that, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on today's video? As that is the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button to show your support for all the content that we do make here on a daily basis. And speaking <clears throat> of growing the channel, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away hobby packs, most likely of Series 1. All you have to do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content you see on the channel, which I upload every single day. And of course, last but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section of this video and every other video of what you're looking forward to this baseball season in 2024 and i will pick the winner once we hit 8,000 subscribers so there is that shouldn't be too long from now shouldn't be too long within the next couple of weeks we will probably be giving away packs of series one here on the channel and speaking of series one as you may notice there is an unopened blaster box of series one in the background right there so you know what that means i opened it and the only way you can watch that is if you become a channel member. So I uploaded my channel members only video today for the week. Um, it is that blaster box opening I found today. Got it opened. So if you want to watch it, hit the join tab. We do videos every single week, um, ranging from a different bunch of different things. So this week, series one blaster box opening. So to all my channel members, if you haven't seen it yet, now is your time after this video to go watch it. And speaking of that blaster box, I will say, I will say this. Wasn't the bad, wasn't the, wasn't the worst, but wasn't the best. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to spoil what I got in it. It's definitely better than you would expect. But at the same time, you know, I only opened one blaster box. I, I'm not buying anymore. Um, I have three Fanatics blasters on the way should be actually here next week um that's what it says anyways in the shipping notification um but those blasters i will say um not impressed not impressed as i expected i didn't really expect to have much of anything in there to be honest with you so if you want to go watch it go click the link and speaking of series one let's get into the real topic of the video so today i bought 10 hanger boxes don't ask me why, but I did it, along with that blaster box you see in the background. I saw them. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I mean, if I ain't buying them, I don't know who else, I guess, obviously, in my area is going to. Um, but I'll tell you one thing. Um, they were all gone. Uh, my brother bought, there was, there was 14 when we got there. My brother bought four. I bought 10. My brother, in the car, opened them. Now, let me tell you something. He has great car rip luck. I mean, Paul Skeen's autograph. Elijah Green autograph. I can't even tell you how many other things he's pulled. He pulled a home field advantage, Mike Trout, out of a hanger box today. I was like, wow. I mean, but I'll tell you one thing. He did not pull any parallels. No parallels at all, except that home field advantage. So, Hopefully, the, we're going to get some good hanger boxes here. Hopefully, we're going to get some good ones. But I bought 10 today. I still have a couple. So I have like 13 or 14 left to open still. Probably going to buy more to open on the channel and things like that as we go along. Um, but either way, Series 1 retail. And then I went back to that Walmart, actually, funny enough, to see what was left. And when I was there first, um, there was fat packs, a galore, a bunch of them. 12 maybe 15 blasters and then I, I i bought all the hangers so there was none left when i went back a second time literally i kid you not a couple hours later nothing was there nothing at all 
everyone's buying Series 1 retail, right? And this is the, I'm getting the gist of the video here, right? So you understand where I'm coming from. Retail, and I'm even seeing this all over the place on, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I follow a bunch of card accounts that post restocks and things like that. These boxes are selling out at, at these stores pretty quickly. But here's the catch. Here is the catch. Hobbies and jumbos are not. This video is called The Sad Truth Behind 2023 or 2024 Top Series 1 Hobby Boxes. Why I say that is because hobby and jumbo hobby, for the first time in a very long time, I don't know how long we have to go back to this, but... Jumbos and hobbies are not good. In essence, what I'm trying to say here, and I have some, some news. Hobby store owners are not happy. They're not. I'll tell you that personally. Hobby store owners are not happy because people have figured out. I even have a buddy, believe it or not. I'll tell you a little story. I have a friend who only buys hobby, you know, me and him are the same, you know, I don't like buying retail for the most part because retail for a bunch of different sets has been awful. And he, he told me that he was like, you know what? I'm buying all these retail boxes of series one and I'm not going to give my guy at the hobby store business. I was like, well, why is that? I mean, I was like, well, you're all about hobby boxes. Why change now? I knew the answer he was going to tell me. But I just wanted to hear it from his mouth so that way I could have some more evidence, right? And he said, odds are clearly better than the retail product compared to the jumbos and the hobbies. So why waste my money? And I was like, bingo, there it is. There is the exact answer I was waiting for. And hobby store owners are aware of this. I can promise you that right now. There is one hobby store I know. He said, very little business between Saturday and Wednesday. Because this is being recorded on Saturday, right? Very little business between the release day until Saturday of Series 1 at the, re or at the hobby store. And that's, that's pretty bad. I mean, you know, I'm all for getting the best value, okay? No doubt about it, right? But here's the thing. When you're going to screw over the foundation of the hobby, which are local card stores. I mean, local card stores, you know, are a big reason why the hobby is, is as big as it is today. Without hobby stores, and, you know, it's sad because you see a lot of hobby stores close down. Um, fun fact, in 2019, right before the whole vid era started, my hobby store was very, very, very close to, to shutting down. He would post all over Facebook saying he needed help, and he would do, like, 60% off of boxes and things like that, and, and everything like that. Um... So I kind of get a, a gist from what is, is happening here. Um, with, without local card shops, the hobby today as we know it would not be the same at all if we only had, you know, Walmart and Targets and Myers to go to to buy sports cards, right? And I, I'll tell you one thing. I don't appreciate what Tops did here because I'll tell you this. A lot of hobby store owners anticipate new card releases because that is, you know, in my experience and what I have seen firsthand, when a new card product comes out, that week is by far the best week of that business's month or a couple months, depending on when product releases, because, you know, Tops has been very wishy-washy as of late with releases i mean they'll they'll release three sets in about two weeks and then they'll go about three months without releasing a single thing you know um which is unfortunate but the next set if you want to know is big league 
which comes out literally the day before opening day. So mark that on your calendars um, in case you guys want to pick any of that up. But it should be pretty good. Um, it was good to me last year, at least. But um, either way, a lot of these card store owners depend on new card releases to thrive and make money. And when Topps makes the product bad and takes a lot of the parallels and puts them in the retail, that is not good for the hobby. It's not. It's not at all. Because those hobby store owners, like I said, depend on making a lot of money when a Series 1 comes out, when a Bowman, Bowman Draft, which luckily is hobby exclusive, um, you know, Chrome Update, uh, you know, Series 2 Update. I don't even know what other sets I even said, right? But those hobby store owners depend on those card releases. And if they're Panini, which my hobby store only does tops, he's not a Panini guy. Um, you know, Panini, we could say the same thing for them, you know, football, basketball, wrestling, whatever, right? Um, but when Tops takes hits out of the products, puts them in the retail, that really screws over the foundation of the hobby. It really does. Like, sit back and think about it. Imagine if you were a card store owner who depended on Tops to put out product and things like that to make money, right? Imagine they destroy and make hobbies and jumbo hobbies terrible to the point where your customers, your customers who put money in your pocket, they know that the boxes you're selling at your store are terrible. And they decide to take that money and go to a Walmart or a Target to buy hundreds of dollars worth of hanger boxes rather than a jumbo or a hobby. That is happening. That is happening as we speak right now. I know another card store owner, right? He, fortunately, got hanger boxes. I don't know how, but he did. He got a couple cases of them. He told me people came in wanting to buy more hanger boxes than actual hobby and, and, and jumbo hobby formats, which again, I will emphasize, that is not good. That is not good at all. When... You rely on product to make money, and this is what Tops is doing to these card shops. That's that's pretty damning, if I say so myself. And it is sad. It, it, it is sad. You know, the philosophy, you, you would think, the more you pay, the better the odds you have, right? In last year with Series 1... Um, that was the case. Um, Jumbos last year were filled to the gills with parallels left and right. This year, not so much. We have opened, I think, five packs in my Jumbo Hobby Box so far. And I'll tell you one thing. It is rough. I have not pulled a singular numbered parallel yet. Not even the guaranteed gold out of 2024. I have not pulled that yet. I know I will because it's guaranteed. But still, it applies. And I have been saying this. I think Topps has a new philosophy. And I made a whole video about this about a month ago. But in case you missed that video, I will break it down for you. I think, moving forward, Topps is really going to screw over hobby box formats. Because, hear me out, if your guaranteed autographs are hits, they're going to take away some parallels because you're already guaranteed something, and they're going to take those parallels and put them into retail product where you're not guaranteed diddly squat, except maybe a couple foil boards, an Easter card, or whatever, right? That's what I, I, I am firmly in the belief that they are doing that right now as we speak. Because they know, they see the graphs, they see the charts. Retail sports cards last year sold horrendously. Horrendously. Series 1 last year retail, god-awful. Plain Jane Heritage, god-awful. Plain Jane Heritage high number, god-awful. Uh, Stadium Club, Blasters, didn't sell at all, awful. I can go on and on with all these different products that didn't sell last year for Tops on the shelves that you could find right now at your store. 2023 Tops update, I see a bunch of, partly because the checklist is terrible, fact right and i am under the belief if 
For example, we will use we'll use archives. For example, archives. Archives gives you two guaranteed autographs, and there's a bunch of parallels you can find in there. Right. Let's say 2024 tops archives comes out whenever that does August, September, October, November of this year. Right. And the odds come out, and of course, hobby boxes, two on car autographs, and that's it. How about if retail has all the parallels for the most part and hobbies have nothing in them? My point's going to stand. My point is going to stand. I'm even going to go as far as saying this. I think Chrome, when Chrome comes out this year in July or August, I'm telling you right now, I've been saying this for a long time. Please, if you don't listen to anything else in this video, listen to what I'm about to tell you right now. I think you should save up some money for Chrome, put some money aside each month, until July or August or whenever pre-orders go live and buy a bunch of that stuff. I'm telling you right now, I, you heard it here first. Retail, when that stuff comes out, of course, with the buybacks and everything like that, still in effect as far as I know it's coming back. I'm telling you right now, retail is going to be by far, without a doubt, the best way to buy 2024 Topps Chrome when that comes out in July or August of this year. I am in the firm belief of that. They're going to put all the parallels in Monster Boxes in blaster boxes and leave jumbos and hobbies with nothing because there's guaranteed autographs in those boxes. I am under the firm belief of that. And I think that's going to happen. We're already kind of seeing it right now with series one. I'm telling you right now, they did this intentionally. They absolutely did this intentionally. They are seeing right now people buying retail more than hobby. I will, uh, Trust me, there are graphs. I can promise you. I don't know about hobby stores, but they could certainly pull up graphs and charts for retail product to see how much is sold so far. I don't know how they would do that about hobby boxes uh, because obviously, you know, they sell by the case and I don't think they track, you know, they can't do that. So they can't really see how many boxes are sold to hobby. They can just tell by case really, um, which I guess is a decent indicator, but not really at the same time. Uh, but I can tell you right now, they're looking at charts and graphs and they are seeing Retail product flying off the shelf faster than ever before. So I'm telling you right now, this is the last thing I'll say in the video. I don't like how Topps is screwing over the hobby hobby stores. I don't. I don't. Because a lot of these people, and a personally, a couple stores I know, depend on new releases to thrive. And when these new releases are terrible, and people want to use their money for a big store like a Walmart or a Target... That leaves the small business in the dust. And eventually, if this keeps on happening, those businesses are going to have to shut down because obviously people are less and less are going to start going there. That is pretty much all I got for you in this video. But either way, either way, let's go and open a hanger box. Again, I got this from Best Buy. Um, the ones I got, they're still in the bag over there from today from Walmart. Um, surprisingly, uh, my Walmart was only $13. Some stores were selling them for $13.98. My store, and I can't even open this. Uh, my store, $13. So I, I said to myself, well, that's not that bad. I think I paid like $126 or something. Or I don't know exactly the price I paid today, but I think it was like, with the blaster box included, I think it was like maybe $155 or something. So it really wasn't bad. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. I'm like I said earlier in the in the video, uh, with with the blaster in the background. Um, I'm not buying another blaster box. I'm not. I mean, it was good, but it, it was better than I expected. But at the same time, I uh, I just I I don't know. If you're a channel member, go watch the video. You'll see for yourself. So let's see the cross section. Do we have anything in here worth noting? I genuinely could not tell you. This is a great cross section. You could see pretty much everything in here, and I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, my brother today pulled a home field advantage. Um, oh, we have a relic. We have a relic in here. I could see it. Yeah, look. I could see it. There's the thick, thick line right there. Yep, we have a relic in here at least, or I believe. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, so we have a relic. That's pretty cool. This will be my third relic from series one already. Um, because we actually got two in our hobby box, um, what was it, uh, the other day, or jumbo hobby box, I should say, so, let's see here, well, I'm gonna probably try to grow, uh, go through these really quickly, 
Um, a lot of these we have already actually already seen. Emerson Hancock, um, Jordan Alvarez. We have actually pretty pretty much seen a lot of these already. Um, I I can't tell you how many cards and rookies I haven't seen yet. Um, I haven't pulled an Ellie yet. I did not pull an Ellie base. I have an Ellie uh, insert, but I have not pulled an Ellie base yet. So I, we, um, I have seen for the most part the majority of these cards. So let's see here: um, Alonzo, Bobby Witt, Rosa Reina, um, Amaya, Yiner Cano. So yeah, these are a new. I haven't said Dane Raphael. That's a new one. I haven't pulled his yet. I don't think. Um, Mauricio Dubon, Brandon Donovan. Let's see here. Nick Robertson, Dansby Swanson, Nestor, League Leaders, Padres Team, Cubs, Camille Duvall, Brian Wu. Which, uh, speaking of Brian Wu, this guy I have seen his autograph all over the place in Series 1. So that guy definitely signed a bunch. Curtis Mead. Uh, there's Ken Griffey. Look at that. Ken Griffey, Celebration of the Kid. I was waiting to pull one of these. I did not pull one yet, and I finally did. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. We have a Lucan Barker. Uh, I think this is a silver. Yeah, silver uh, rookie. So there's that. Kyle Bradish. That's pretty cool. Um, Joe Ryan. We got a Ronald Acuna. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool uh, photo right there. Something you don't see every day. Cross, yeah, here we go. So let's see here. Maybe we don't have a bat rock. I thought we did. Uh, maybe we don't. Uh, maybe I was just seeing things. Okay, never mind. I could have sworn Otani, Wit, um, Cross, and Strand. I could have sworn that we got. Maybe I was. Maybe I was just seeing this border. Either way. Okay, well, we got a Juan Soto. Uh, I don't even know what you call these inserts, like blueprint. I don't even know what they're even called, to be honest with you. Dolores Garcia. So, yeah, honestly, hanger box number two. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. Um, hanger box number two was not that great. Uh, hanger box number two. I mean, we pulled two yellows of pitchers, which, I mean, I don't think would, you know, suffice with people, but... Uh, if you missed yesterday's video, that is literally out of four yellows we have pulled so far. That is literally the third out of four <laughs> yellows have been pitchers. So hopefully my luck is better um, with those at least. So either way, guys, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think about this. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Why? Why not? And I will see you guys in the next video.